the top 10 places you don't want to miss in England. I'll be honest, I think this was our hardest one out of all three from this series. Welcome back, guys. Hey. Welcome to Travel Vlogs with Tristan Kez. Woo! It's another week, it's another episode. We're Tristan Kez. Murphy's with us. Frank's having a little sleep, but I'm sure he'll be out soon. Stop number one, Clee Hill in Shropshire. We actually <laughs> found it on our route to Wales, Yeah, didn't we did, we? didn't we? Let us tell you a bit about this stunning spot. It is is on a hill. This is what you tuned in for, <laughs> isn't it, guys? It is a beautiful, idyllic little spot in Shropshire, tucked into the middle of nowhere, it kind of seems. You follow this path all the way up to Clee Hill, which is, it's an abandoned quarry mine of some yes. sort, isn't it? We're going to overlay some really cool footage so you can see what Clee Hill is. It is a 360 degree viewpoint with flat level parking. It is very potholy, but there is a multitude of spaces that you can pull up and walk. It's stunning. It's absolutely stunning, isn't it? Yeah. If you want wild, if you want views, if you want peace and quiet, if you want nature, Clee Hill is an awesome spot. Yeah, beautiful views up there, isn't there? Stunning. We've been in colder weather, I guess, yeah. so we don't know what it's like in the summer. But uh, when we went uh, February, January times, yeah. pretty dead there, isn't it? Yeah. A few dog walkers, one or two other vans in the times that we've stayed there. But yeah, it's it's pretty chilled. Yeah, yeah it's nice a lovely, spot. lovely little spot. And, yeah. you know, if you are on your way to Wales, it's quite close. So that's Clee Hill. Stop number two that you don't want to miss on your England road trip is... Tintagel. Now, we know this isn't a hidden gem or an undiscovered secret. However, did you know that in Tintagel, car parks on the main high street actually allow you to pay to stay overnight? Which I don't think a lot of people know because you tend to see these more busier, touristy based places and think, oh, there's no way we're going to be able to stay in our van here. It's just going to be a no go. It's not. It's fantastic. You literally are smack bang in the middle of the high street, yeah, aren't you? The main high street, and then I can't remember how many many but the King Arthur's car park which is nearer yep. to all the attractions you can they've got a little like motorhome area around the back and then as each car park gets out of town I think it might get a little bit cheaper I, I think it does remember. marginally by a pound or two mm. we kind of stayed in one of the furthest car parks lovely wasn't it a couple of other motorhomers and camper vanners there quiet peaceful you're welcomed and then it's really nice isn't it for the accessibility of Tintagel village and then the castle and Merlin's cave yeah it's everything on your doorstep there are a couple of farmer fields once you head out of Tintagel, if you go north, then there are some farmer's fields that open in better weather. However, we went a couple of years ago. Every time we've been back since, the field hasn't actually been open. Yeah, so... I think it's if the weather's right, the yeah. conditions are right, they'll open it. If the no. gate's open, someone will collect money. If the gate's locked, you ain't getting in. <laughs> but then that's quite handy if you did want to check out that farmer's field and it was closed, which is how we found the car parks, then you can just head down to the car park. So if you want to go to Tintagel, you will definitely have a place to stay. And you will be very welcomed because, yeah, they, they put it on for van lifers. Yeah. They want you there. Yeah. Isn't that nice? But Tintagel's a nice little place steeped in history. You can go and walk up and around Tintagel Castle. You have to go and buy a ticket from the English Heritage Ticket Office and then you could get access to go up and walk around it. You can kind of catch a nice little glimpse of it from different points. Yeah, some really lovely viewpoints, yeah. isn't there? Yeah, one thing we did the last time we went, we actually timed it all right. Once you get to kind of the Tintagel Castle area, you can actually take a set of stairs down to the actual beach which I guess is kind of underneath the Tintagel Castle and you can go in Merlin's Cave can't yes. you? It's pretty sick Yeah it? very very cool you can actually go all the way through I believe Merlin's Cave Yeah we didn't do side, it but no. we could see light the other side and I, I assume at low tide you might be able to get your way through but hey that's not it's not safety advice. Get yourself down to Tintagel. It's a lovely little area. Plenty to do. Oh, yeah. Grab a pasty as well. That's Ooh, always quite nice. Oh, yes. Uh, Defo grab a pasty. Yeah. And if you're veggie, they have some awesome veggie options. Yeah. They're huge, aren't yeah. they? Did you know <laughs> on Cornish pasties, while they have the thick braid of pastry round the outside, it's because the miners used to take a Cornish pasty for their lunch. And obviously they had filthy hands. So they used to hold on to the crust so they could eat the rest of the pastry. And even back in the day, they used to do half and half and have a dessert on one side. Little fact for you. Number three, we are bringing you a very, very, very cute little spot. Yeah. Nestled in the valleys of Dartmoor in Devon is this incredible little car park in the middle of this little village that they have opened the car park up to overnight stays for only £5 a night has a little stream running through it. And yeah, you are smack bang in the middle of this gorgeous little Devonshire village yeah. with 
a couple of pubs dotted round. Yes. There's a little cafe, multitude of walks yeah. around that area, gorgeous church. Because it's smack bang in the middle of Dartmoor kind of thing. Yeah. A 20 minute walk and we were up on the on the moors, weren't yeah. we? Yeah. Which was pretty cool. Proper windy that day, wasn't it, when we were up there? Yeah, it was, wasn't it? We saw a big Land Rover tour, didn't we? Yeah, so About like 30, 30 Land, Rover. Land Rovers come through. Cool. It's another one of those, we know we bang on about these community incentives. I've got to stop saying bang on, that's from you. Yeah. <laughs> Harp on. We harp on about. <laughs> I know we talk about these community incentives, but I think it is so important as van lifers that we utilise and support these sorts of incentives when they happen. There's a ice cream kiosk that will take your money as you pull in to the car park. Super lovely, super friendly. And it brings some money back into this little tiny village tucked into the Dartmoor Valley. So, yes, not only do you get a beautiful place to stay, a wonderful place to walk, plenty of amenities on your doorstep, you're also helping give money back this little village so to me all of those points yeah. make it an absolute unmissable spot and one thing to add is uh, like with a lot of places in england overnight parking in dartmoor is banned so yeah. this is perfect you can enjoy dartmoor during the day you go and park up over here for night stop number four is if you followed us on Instagram, you will see that this spot delivered to us, possibly up there in the top three of the sunsets we have seen. Cross Ants in Cornwall may not look like much when you pull up. It is a small little bay, little tucked away area in Cornwall. As you pull in, it's fairly deserted. There's, you know, a collection of houses and then there are two car parks. One not with a sea view, but another with an epic sea view that you can park in right up to the edge of i say a, a cliff it's not a cliff edge the, the sea's literally just yeah, there yeah, isn't yeah, it yeah. how much overnight or well, 12 pounds we we're in the area weren't we yeah, yeah we've been to st michael's mountain and kind of wanted to find somewhere we could stay overnight yes. and then yeah we pulled up there epic sunset lovely beach cool little weird tree growing on the beach yeah there was a, lo a lonely tree growing it was yeah. a sandy beach wasn't it yeah. the tide was out and there is as you come down the steps from the car park there's a handful of beach bars where we actually went um, and sat up on the top and got one of the most delicious beers i think i've ever tried yeah it's like a mango yeah it's like a mango beer wasn't yeah, it? yeah it's really nice we like mango beer there you go little tip but yeah we sat up on the top there and just watched the sunset you know the vans parked nice and safely in the car park next door yeah it was and yeah we were greeted greeted no we had the most epic sunset yeah. and it was beautiful because as how you park your van when you're sitting in your van you can't see the the fence that's in front of you so you just have this view of the sea like your whole front windows of your van turn into the most epic picture yeah. frame don't they yeah. so yes pra sands if you haven't been highly recommend get yourself down there it's number five Worth Mat Traverse. But that's what, it's an X quarry Worth Mat Traverse. So we found it, again, I think randomly, we picked an area to go to, which we visited like Corfe Castle and that, didn't we? Yeah, Corfe Castle, that's a great castle. Yeah. To have a little walk round and you can obviously go inside, but we just walked round it, yeah. didn't we? But yeah, we found ourselves down at Worth Mat Traverse and you can park in a car park in the village. 20 minute walk. About that, yeah, yeah about 20 minutes. Down to the coast and then you find yourself at Worth Mat Traverse and it's just a series now of of quarried caves i guess is the best way of explaining it it's been in loads of films like star wars blake seven there was like fans of these things walking yeah. around going oh you here because it's in blake seven and we were like we've never watched blake seven it's really popular in a bunch of tv series and films maybe doctor who as well yeah i think it has been used for doctor who films. yeah i think it was closed for a bit because they were going to film uh one of the new star wars because it's owned by disney now and it was a bit dangerous there i think um so yeah it was closed for a little bit i believe it is opened up again but it's really cool because you can kind of just walk wherever you want and then we walked through some of the like caves and they seem well sketchy how they're held up don't they yeah i mean they're pro it's proper like cave environment it's super cold yeah the, the tunnels just go on for yeah we obviously didn't explore right into the yeah well we only place. had like our phones and then your phone camera like the light doesn't go very fast no. we were like yeah <laughs> <laughs> we'll just hang around here and 
Yeah. But it was brilliant. We walked through. There's one cave you can walk through where you walk in and then as you come out, you literally come out on the cliff edge as a little ledge and then just a sea around yeah. you. It's Yeah, it's it's one to absolutely add to your lift. Yeah, it's, it's very different, isn't it? Very different. And it's and also, I just get so excited when you find places like this in England that are free because, as we all know, there seems to be charges going on for every single little bit of outside activity. So when you find something like this where, yeah, you can just access explore and enjoy for free i yeah to me they're unmissable yeah yeah definitely. and also actually a little heads up as well the car park that you park in to walk to the caves has a wood henge structure within it which is very cool i think it was built by the local landlord of the pub um, the council actually demanded that it was taken down. So all of the residents in the village created a petition to make sure it stayed. So, yes, a little bit of uh, people power in that village. But, yeah, it's very cool. Go and check out the Wood Henge as well. Yeah, it's a lovely little area down there, though, isn't it? Mm. Um, we went to an area where there was dinosaur, supposed ancient dinosaur footprints. Yeah, yeah. That was, yeah. I, I didn't get to go to that because <laughs> there was cows in the field and I'm scared of cows. Uh, and you thought they were going to attack me, didn't you? Cows kill people. Google it. It's not an unfounded fear. Stop number six. They're taking you all round England with these stops. This one. Now, I know a lot of people have said to us they find it very difficult van lifing in the south of England. Yeah. We have found a very lovely little stop just outside of Brighton. It's about 45 minute drive, I would say, from Brighton. So if that's somewhere you wanted to visit, you are very close. It's also only, only about a 10 minute drive from Eastbourne. And it is a pub called The Beachy Head. Now, this is a eat and dine in the pub and they will allow you to stay overnight in the car park kind of deal and it's right on the top of the cliffs where you have got a view of the ocean there's walks it's just a great little local stop in the south near the cities but you're still in the countryside you're allowed to be there you won't get moved on and yeah there's just epic views lovely walks Toilets in the car park down the way. Fantastic pub that you can go and eat in. You can go off for a walk around the top of the cliff edges, yep. can't you? I think you can walk to Eastbourne. Yeah, I think you can. Yeah, I think you can actually. There is a walk. There's also a great National Trust car park at the bottom of the hill from Beachy Head, which is for Berlin Gap, which is a very popular beach. Lots of people love to flock there. Yep. If you want to go and spend the day at Berlin Gap, but obviously National Trust don't allow overnight parking in their car park, you can whiz yourself up the hill to the Beachy Head pub, grab Grab yourself a nice bit of food, stay overnight and have some beautiful sunset walks. Yeah. You're also near Seven Sisters, yes, which is very famous. And then you've got a nice uh, waterway there. And then you've got Friston Forest, uh, which sort of backs onto the back of it, which is great for cycling, walking. Um, yeah, you can lose yourself in there for a few hours cycling and walking. So it's quite a bit to do in the area. Seven. So about number seven. seven. <laughs> this is a little secret that we armed and odd whether to share but you know we love you all, so how could we not? I don't know how many of you have seen people sharing their footage, their reels, their videos, their content of Polzeth Surfing Beach in Cornwall. It is one of the best. It is an epic beach, but it is very, 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 very busy. And the campsite that a lot of people choose to stay in that looks directly over the beach is extortionate in price. So we found an absolute little gem that's in walking distance from Polzeth. Took us about 20 to 30 minutes, I if, think. If Depends how fast you walk. Beautiful walk all the way along the shoreline. Yeah. Absolutely stunning to a another little bay that's called Dama Bay. Now, this is also a windsurfing beach, water activity beach. It's much quieter than Polzeth. You can enjoy the, the, the bay. Oh, it's a lovely bay because where Polzeth is, is kind of the sea hits Polzeth Beach and the waves roll in, whereas it's like Dama Bay, way calmer. Yeah. So, yeah, if you want more chilled out experience on the water, you've got kids or you're learning to paddleboard or whatever, it's kind of perfect, isn't it? And then that's the beautiful little sea if you just walk up from Dama Bay through the fields past this beautiful little church, you come to a little campsite that is only £14 a night, which is, I think, probably about a seventh of the Polzef 
price and it's only a 20 minute walk so you could also walk with your surfboard to poles f that would be feasible yeah. but it's only 14 pounds it's a very basic campsite there's a couple of toilets maybe a washing up area there's no showers there's no electric hookup but you're just yeah you're in a fantastic location yeah what f 10 minutes walk from dama bay oh god yeah only yeah. about 10 minutes walk yeah you're and, through some lovely sand dunes yeah absolutely gorgeous as you're walking from the campsite down you can see the sea yeah um so yes that is a real hidden gem because if you don't want to spend 60 pounds to go to poles f you can spend 14 have dama bay and poles f i mean yeah. i think that's much much more of a winner yeah. number eight Cheddar Gorge. Yes. We've been meaning to go to Cheddar Gorge for, well, I don't know, years, I think. Yes, years. And then we went, well, in the last few months, didn't we? Mm. Slight problem. They closed the road off to Cheddar Gorge when we got there. We didn't know that. That was brilliant, <laughs> yeah. wasn't it? We made it round to the other side of Cheddar Gorge where we could park up and go for a wander. But Cheddar Gorge is really cool, isn't it? Yes, very cool. Very cool. Yeah, lovely, lovely little high street as you get, come yeah. up to the gorge as well, isn't it? It had a very sort of really cool vibe. There's water flowing all the way through the village there's some really quirky shops yeah. and bars and when we went it was fairly quiet I imagine the summer probably gets quite yeah, busy yeah imagine it's mental yeah. but in a lovely way it had that sort of you can imagine it comes to life yeah. in the summer and then yeah when you get to the top of the village you can then drive or walk up through the Cheddar Gorge there's plenty of walks where you can go up to the top yeah. of the gorge and look down which is what we did yeah. didn't we I think you can walk all the way around the gorge itself in sort of a, a route oh, okay. but yeah we walked through the middle walked around the top and there's like a viewing tower as yes, well up there, there which is pretty yeah. cool yeah, that was cool. Definitely one to add to your list. I love it when nature's big, if that makes sense. I think that's why I yeah. like Scotland, where you've got where you just feel so insignificant to this massive yeah. nature. And driving through it's pretty cool once it was yeah. opened up the next day. Yeah, that was very cool. Yeah. yeah. Epic. Yes. Add Cheddar Gorge to your list for shoals. And then our last one, if you have been keeping up with our travels, you know that as part of our slow travel, we were previously in the New Forest before we headed down Cornwall Way. So we had to add this to the list. Now, you may be thinking, you've told us about the New Forest. We know about the cost effective campsites that are there. <laughs> if you haven't, but, check out this video. <laughs> yeah, good point. Because there are plenty of campsites that are cost effective right in the middle of the New Forest. But if you're looking for something a little bit different, there is a little cider farm in Burley, a little village which is it's like a little witchcraft village. Lovely little collection of shops. And then this little cider farm, which I believe is a B&B &B also, is part of the Britstop scheme. And what we love about this is A, how welcoming they are, B, the cider is fantastic, and C, their Britstop actually offers you to pull in off the car park onto a little enclosed grassy field. They only have space for two vans, and they also have have electric hookup at an extra charge for so five pounds. for five pounds so if you're a member of Britstop you stay for free and you can pay five pounds for electric and they've got water they've got water it's yeah I mean what more what more do you need when we went last summer the lady in the cider shop was absolutely delightful wasn't she told us to go and get our sun lounges out and lay down and enjoy the sun yeah. so it's you know some Britstops you know you have to be in your vehicle and adhere to the rules, of course. But then there are other Brit stops that, yeah, by their own rules, allow you to just enjoy the space that little bit more, yeah, don't it was, they? It was like a two-person campsite, wasn't yeah, it? it was. Or two-vehicle campsites. Yeah. If you haven't caught our videos and want to see the new forest and want to go camping with ponies and donkeys deer. and deer at, you know, for less than 20 quid, then go and check out the video. Because, yeah, we'll definitely be heading back to the yeah. New Forest. So I think that rounds up our 10 spots not to miss in England. And that also brings to the end our three-part series yeah. of the top 10 spots you don't want to miss when you're travelling around the UK. We've done Scotland, we've done Wales, and now this is England. So I hope we have bought you some little gems and added some little nuggets to your road trips. Um, but yes... What's coming next from us, you may say? We have promised and we will deliver on a van tour so you can see the wonderful delights that is old Gertie. We also have another few videos coming up for those that want to kind of know a bit more about the behind the scenes of this life. Is it as good as it seems? What are the tough points? What do you need to be prepared for? We're going to be bringing you a few more of these, these chats, I yeah, think. Yeah. yeah. And if there's anything else you want to hear from us, drop us a comment. And Let also we are going to and, be... Sorry. Thank you to everyone who's dropped us a comment so far with suggestions and things that you'd like from us. 
Yeah. Really appreciate that. Yeah, really appreciate that. Someone gave us a great idea about actually putting together a video for a full package road trip for five days yeah, or seven itinerary. days. Yeah, absolutely. Which is something we are working on. And you're probably going to see that on our website before you see it on YouTube, just because I feel like that's going to be an easier way to get the information and put it in your hands so don't forget to check out tristandkez.com where we speak about a lot of the places in this video and we've got like full guides and write-ups on them we are on buy me a coffee as well so thanks to everyone who's bought us a coffee so far we really appreciate that ah you were legends uh, and also we've added a shop onto our buy me a coffee so if you would like to download any of our lovely photography that we take and download it as a screensaver on your phone so you can take it wherever you are head on over download it it's free why not let's know if you enjoy it i think that's it for now yeah. isn't it yeah right until next time, folks, don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the bell notification so you don't miss when we next put out a video. And until next time, folks, bye for now. <laughs>